Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to calculate and plot the band structure of a 2D material such as the monolayer of molybdenum disulfide using the ripper module of Turbomol. Now I'd like to mention that this video is a follow-up to my previous tutorial where I showed you guys how to calculate and plot the band structure of a 3D material such as bulk silicon cubic crystal. But don't worry, this video will still be understandable for you even if you haven't watched the previous tutorial. Although I would still recommend that you do watch it so that you, you know, you get more familiarity with the Ripper module of Turbomol and how to create the input files for 3D, 2D materials, etc. Okay, so let's begin. So first of all, we need the structural information such as the atomic coordinates and the lattice information for this material. So I will head over to this computational 2D materials database, in other words, C2DB. And also, um, you can also access this um, database by going to this link. I will put the link in the description down below. So let's go ahead and search for this material. So we'll type in MOS2 and then press the search icon. And then let's find it. Um, okay, so here it is. So we will just go ahead and click on it. And we see that uh, the structure looks something like this of the MOS2, you know, 2D material. And also, um, we'll be trying to reproduce this band structure already available in the database calculated using the PBE exchange correlation functional. And with this band structure, you actually get a band gap of around um, 1.58 electron volts. So let's see if we can reproduce it or not. Okay, so we need the structure. So we'll go ahead and click on download, then XYZ. And then as you can see, this file has an XYZ extension. So you might be wondering, that is strange, how can I have the crystal uh, crystallographic information in an X, XYZ file? But actually it is, you know, an extended XYZ file. So that is why it has the um, crystallographic information. If you open it, you will see that on the second line, which is usually a comment in the XYZ file, you will see that they provide the lattice information. So these are the lattice vectors. So now just go ahead and uh, open this Ripper Tools web app that we have been using in the previous tutorials as well. And here we will go ahead and click on Convert Other Formats to Ripper. And then in the Source File Format, we will select Extended XYZ. And then we will scroll down and click on Browse Files to upload the file that we just downloaded from the database. And you will see that it has passed all the structural information here. And you will see you get some ripper input stuff here but we are not going to use this but rather we are going to download the zip file for this tutorial and then we are going to go to this band structure path utility and then upload this downloaded zip file so it was saved by the name of structure 13 so let's go ahead and upload it and now um, you can uncheck this but actually it doesn't make a difference uh, usually it is recommended to use a primitive cell but here um, I will, uh, here the uh, cell is the same. So um, yeah, so here um, we get the path, you know, and the high symmetry points coordinates for the band structure calculation. But the thing is that this time we want to do it for 2D periodicity. So first of all, we are going to click on this PBC and specify the periodicity to be 2D. And then you notice that the special high symmetry points are gamma M, K, and this matches pretty well with the points here given as well. So gamma MK. And then what you're going to do is you are simply going to, you know, copy all this input. So let's go ahead and copy this quad file contents, open your terminal. And again, I will assume that you already have TurboMol installed. So let's go ahead and create a directory for this calculation. So um, we will come here and create a directory called MOS2. And then we will move into that directory, create the um, code file and paste the contents of the code file here using control plus V, then control plus O to save it, enter, control plus X to exit. And now you can see that this file is created here. Then we will run the defined utility to specify the basis sets and all. So first of all, we do A space code, enter, asterisk, no, basis that we will specify to be POB TZVP ref2. So we will type in B all POB TZVP ref2 for all atoms. Press enter then BL to check if the basis set was specified correctly or not and indeed it is. Then press enter again asterisk to go to the next menu. Then we will specify the initial guess using the extended Huggle theory guess. So EHT enter. 
default yes molecular charge zero occupations default yes and then we'll go to the dft sub menu type in on to use dft funk we will switch to pbe then we will also use a fine upgrade of m5 and then we will press asterisk and enter and um, then we'll go to the ri sub menu type in on to turn it on then j bars to specify the auxiliary basis and then we will use the um, def to universal auxiliary basis or sorry um, it's just called universal by the way so universal and then check bl to see if it was specified okay indeed it was then asterisk hit enter asterisk hit enter asterisk hit enter okay so now you see that you have the control file you have the mos file you have the aux basis and basis file as well now open the control file and then come back to this web app copy all of this stuff come back to the control file and go to somewhere here let's paste all of this above the rij data group so i'll paste it using control plus v and now you just need to make one more teeny tiny change that is below k points you also need to specify a k point grid for the uh, you know preceding um, scf calculation so for the bands uh, to be calculated more precisely you need to provide a good k point sampling so i will use um, let's say a 12 by 12 k point sampling and then i will press ctrl plus o to save it enter and then ctrl x to exit now um, I would also like to mention here because I had skipped it um, uh, for this tutorial but I think I'll just mention it anyway that this is the main stuff that you need for a uh, you know band structure calculation so basically k point lines means that you are going to be calculating the band structure for three lines so first line would be gamma to m then m to k and then k to gamma and similarly um, you know uh, the this number here specifies the number of points between so basically this line such as gamma to m would be uh, calculated by calculating the value of the bands at some you know discrete points bet between these two points so the number of those points would be 40 so that is why we have 40 over here and then these are actually the x y coordinates of the starting and the end point so we start with gamma so that is why it is 0 comma 0 and then we end at m and it has the coordinates 0.5 comma 0 right so that is why um, we have that over there so we start with gamma we go to m so that is that so yeah okay so just i wanted to clarify uh, you know what you're putting in the input so that you understand and also one final note that we have the periodicity too and for periodicity too you just need to specify length of the a side the length of the b parameter and then the angle for the gamma angle right so come back to the terminal okay so that's all you need to know and now uh, i will specify the number of threads for this calculation so that would be eight and then i will run the calculation as so and i will hit enter now if i open the output file right now so you see that it is running and while it is running in order to plot this band structure what we are going to do is we are going to click here on this web app and this will take you to the github repo of this web app and then you will click over here and go to the home page of this repo and go to this band plotting examples and then go to this directory for 2d mos2 so basically i have already provided some of the stuff here that you can you know use but the main thing that we need is this python script that plots the band structure so you are just going to go ahead and download it and let's keep it and then what we are going to do is we are going to create some directory uh, let's say on our desktop called mos2 and then i'll just open it and paste the you know this python script in this directory and then i will open this python script and i'll show you what uh, you know uh, lines you need to edit for your own calculation now come back to the terminal and we can see that our ripper has ended normally so the calculation is complete so let's see how long it took ah so actually that was very quick so it only took 17 seconds right so that is pretty great 
and you know it, the calculation converged quite quickly within just 15 cycles and you get the band gap you know and other stuff here so the main thing is that the band structure is plotted in the bands.xyz file and uh, the format of the file is here i've also explained it in my previous tutorial but um, anyway so what we need to do is we need to download that file so i'll use uh, winscp to download this file and i will you know so let me just quickly open this file on my remote cluster so okay mos2 bands.xyz and open this on my desktop so I will copy this bands.xyz file in the same directory where I have this Python script, right? And then I will come back to this uh, Python script and also open the bands.xyz adjacent to it. Okay, so that is nice. So the first thing that we want to do is we need to specify um, the minimum and the maximum energy range. So if we come back to this plot on this database, if you are trying to reproduce this and you notice that okay there they have this Fermi label over here and they plot the um, you know so the Fermi label is around at minus five electron volts and they plot it starting from somewhere like minus one so you can say that they are going four electron volts above this Fermi label and similarly they start from minus five here and then go up to like minus nine so you can say they are going also minus four volts electron volts um, below the Fermi label so that would be your minimum and maximum points for this uh, file because in this uh, you know python script the fermi level is shifted to the zero i mean all the bands are shifted by the uh, energy of the fermi level so basically your fermi level will lie at the zero energy okay so yeah so that is why you have minus four to four um, f electron volts range for this um, plot then you need to specify the you know energy shift or in other words the fermi level as i mentioned before so that would be somewhere here so minus one point minus zero point eight one two seven oh so go ahead and copy it over here copy and paste it and then the number of k points so number of k points is also given in your output file that is around 120 so i have written 120 here and then the k point labels so in this case we you know have one two three four k points so that is why you have gamma mk gamma the names of those k point uh, points and um, you know that's why they are four and then you need to specify the k point ticks and this is actually a bit tricky so the first point of course is going to be zero as it corresponds to the gamma point but the next point m so what would that be so if you come over to your bands file so every 40th value of the um, you know modulus k of this band file would give you the value that you need to put here so if we maybe slightly enlarge it so the first column is for kx then the second column is for the yth component of the k point then the third column is for the zth component of the k point which would be zero forever um, for this you know 2d calculation and then this is your modulus k column so this fourth column is your modulus k column and then finally the energies now since the first line of this line of this file is you know just a comment so therefore you will need to go to every 41st line of this file that would correspond to the 40th point so if you go to the 41st line so here you see that you get this value and you can just go ahead and copy it and then come back to your python script and paste it here so this will correspond to m and then similarly for the k you will go to the 81st point so that would be here so you can just go ahead and copy it and paste it here and then finally the 121st point or the line would give me the coordinate for the gamma point and okay and you see that we come back to zero after all of this so because then your band against uh, band structure calculation again starts from the left side of the plot okay so that is all you need to edit in this python script now what you can do is you can you know open the terminal in the same directory where you have this bands.xyz file as well as the python script so you open your terminal and you just run this script using python and i assume you have matplotlib pandas library as well as numpy installed so you just go ahead and run this hit enter and wait for your plot uh, to appear 
And here it is. So let me slightly enlarge in it and put it over to the side. And now let's go ahead and compare it with this reference plot. So as you can see, it mag matches the reference plot quite well. So I mean, if you look here, you have all the characteristics matching the same as the, you know, the reference plot. Everything looks basically the same, even in the conduction bands as well as in the valence band. So we were successful in reproducing it. Now let's also calculate the band gap very roughly. So if you put a mouse over here, so in the lower right corner, or let me just go ahead and put it over here. So if we put our, you know, mouse over here, then we see in the lower right corner of the screen that it says minus 0 0.912. So that would be our, you know, th this value minus 0 0.912. And then here we have 0.76. So now if we go ahead and add these two values, so 0 0.76 plus 0 0.912, and we get a band gap of around 1.67 EV, which is in reasonable agreement with 1.58 EV. The remaining difference could be due to the use of zero potentials in their calculation in the database, as well as due to the use of a slightly less diffuse basis set such as POBT EV prev2. You could perhaps add a few more diffuse functions to make it um, even accurate, I guess. I mean, you will have to test it for yourselves. So that is it for this tutorial. I really hope that you guys liked it and learned something new from it. And if you're new to this channel, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.